what I'm going to talk about. Photographer's portfolio, and it's not good. Ah. In this video, I'm going to talk about photographer's portfolio. What the best practices of building a portfolio of a commercial photographer that actually works, meaning it will bring clients to your business. I'll try to put um, like action items uh, from the experience that I learned all these years, over 15 years of doing photography and teaching photography, as well as what I learned from photographers that I was interviewing, uh, was working with our instructors and uh, from our best students who created the business and now they work as a full-time photographers. You need to know your audience and you need to know who you are. What kind of photographer you are and who will be looking at your portfolio. This is the crucial thing because it's like it's a strategy of doing all the rest that you're going to do in terms of uh, building the portfolio. If you are a commercial photographer, are you going to shoot and offer services like, I don't know, animal photography, baby born photography, architectural photography, product photography? I never seen a well-known established photographer who has all kind of photography that he or she enjoys doing on their portfolio. They target it for specific audience. If you talk about product photography, it's okay to mix product photography in your portfolio with, let's say, architecture, with maybe some business portraiture. It's not really cool, but it's okay. But it's not good to put, let's say, landscaping. Even if you enjoy it, stick to the main topic in your photography for your portfolio. If, let's say, you shoot in weddings, as well as product photography, which is really rare, I think, but it's possible, it's better to have different portfolios. It will be different links, and people, when they visit your portfolio, they will know that you are specializing on this area. Less is better. Make sure that you have only the best. And it's a huge mistake that I see um, beginners are making. They put all photos that they like and probably their friends like to a portfolio. And it's not good. Visitors, especially potential clients, they won't remember all the photos. Extremes is what catch our attention. So they most likely will remember either best photos or worst photos. So if you have some photo that is not really good, you're not sure, you better don't put it in your portfolio. How to find out the best? Either you feel it and you know it by yourself if you have self-expectations, uh, but probably it's not a good idea to rely on friends. Um, well, they may just tell you what you want to hear. The most professional way to do this is to hire a representative. They, uh, there are agencies like Wonderful Machine, for example. Uh, they will look through your portfolio and uh, they know the market. They work with uh, both photographers and uh, photo buyers and they definitely will help you to clean your portfolio. This is what happened uh, with me a long time ago. I kind of went all these steps, I made mistakes, all these mistakes was on my portfolio. Mind opening experience for me when uh, the uh, representative called me and she said, you know, you have a great portfolio, uh, I want to uh, send it to our potential, to the client uh, who's looking for a photographer, but you need to do something first. She gave me uh, great advices on how to clean it. You need to choose the platform and basically build the portfolio, right? Probably the best way, uh, the least expensive, uh, easy to, you know, to, to make it happen is to use uh, builders like a Wix.com or let's say SmugMug, uh, especially like a SmugMug, they have uh, specific templates for photographers. There are tons of them. I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, you do your own research and I can tell you that it's not that important. Uh, what kind of provider it would be. Uh, everyone has some, you know, cons and pros. It's more about finding the template that you like. I personally use SmugMug. It's about uh, 160 per year. And actually, it's not that expensive at all if you think uh, what um, kind of portfolio it is. I can show you, uh, basically, they have tons of different templates, specifically made for photographers. And what's cool, they have uh, all this ability to share, they have unlimited uploads, uh, meaning that uh, I use it to share raw files or uh, proofs with my clients. 
after the shots it's a private album so that easy to create upload photos send links uh, passport protected or uh, kind of unlisted so uh, with link uh, only per person can access it it's cool when you do work with clients when you need kind of that functionality let's look at how portfolio should look like I opened a few portfolios of photographers uh, well-known or maybe not so well-known photographers and let's see Michael uh, Miller the very first thing I see that boom there is some filmmaking is going on right maybe but at least it's I immediately see this is actually cool representation show some video uh, full screen what he's shooting probably animals um, again boom some editorial right some travel photography so there is no doubt that it's not a product photographer or not a wedding photographer right I immediately can see it then I scroll and I see hey there is some portraiture yes definitely some editorial stuff and uh, well in the first seconds I understand what kind of photographer uh, is this then uh, Michael David Adams again see the layout huge photo it's actually it's a really great idea to show a uh, big photo uh, full screen then uh, Peter uh, Sheffrick one of my uh, well most inspiring photographers I was kind of uh, you know 15 years ago I was looking at his photography what kind of portfolio is this it's a slideshow on the front page. You immediately see what kind of photographer is here. Jeremy Covert. Immediately, boom, you see the style, you understand what he's shooting. Then, for example, uh, Yahil uh, Orgel, one of our students, uh, best students, uh, he opened uh, his own business after graduating from the school. Uh, he took about two years, uh, he spent two years in uh, Pro Club, in professional membership. And took few uh, few courses. Now uh, he's doing really great in New York as a product photographer. This is another layout that I really like. Uh, it's sort of like a grid, like a gallery. Again, multiple images, and you immediately see what kind of photography uh, Yahil offers. This is, for example, mine. Yeah, if you go to colorscope.com, uh, it's Magmag. Layout is this. Uh, we can choose any but uh, my idea is I show slideshow and again something that I want to represent even though on portfolio I have uh, different styles different uh, type of photography for example jewelry I enjoy the most so I'm showing jewelry on the home page plus I know the market I know that jewelry photographers are on the biggest demand so here we go uh, jewelry photographer Alex Koloskov make sure to have some personal information how you work uh, what uh, you do beside photography so we all tend to trust more to people who we know better as a person as a human not just a, as a professional so adding uh, your you know information about your hobbies uh, maybe a little bit about even your family it's a big plus it again it makes you uh, more friendly to the viewer and more chances that uh, they will pick you uh, if they want to do a photography with you about commercial photography in most of the cases uh, i'm talking about product and uh, you know uh, most of the studio photography it's working with businesses it's not persons it will be a business who will be contacting it contacting you however who will making decisions in the business it's just person like you and me and uh, knowing better is always a big plus make frequent updates it's cool to have a blog some sort of blog usually it's like a behind the scene for example on uh, Peter uh, Sheffrick he has um, how we work for example uh, there is some information well not much so it's not probably <laughs> a good example but behind the scene for example this is something that shows his professional skills right how he worked but also he shows like behind the scene it's more personal information plus the cool thing about this portfolio is uh, relatively static content you can't update portfolio every day especially at the beginning when you don't have uh, much work it's not that you know you should that much in terms of SEO search engine optimization uh, any uh, search engine um, rank websites that update more frequently higher than static websites how to make your portfolio be more uh, dynamic you know has more dynamic content 
blog is one of the things. And behind the scene, whatever you shoot, whatever you do, post it like, hey, we work on this uh, project, uh, even if it's self-assignment. That's completely fine. It's new content on the website. Google will like it. Plus, client will see that you are doing something. Uh, it's alive, it's changing, and it's a great thing to have. Another tip on portfolio building. Don't post just a single image from the photo session. Post series of images. It can be done by uh, you know, combining images with the same, same mood or compositions or colors or subject. It's all about ability to tell the story. Every client, especially, I'm talking about uh, more like campaigns, advertising campaigns, and more about higher-end clients, but it, it goes to anyone. They want a story to be told with your photography. It's harder to tell story with one image, even though it's possible and it's a great skill. It's something that we teach on the certification program, how to tell the story just with a single image, if it's not just, you know, on um, e-commerce, on a white background, single piece. It's a composition. But it's way better to tell story, well, way easier to tell story when you have multiple images. Beside the story, it shows that you can maintain some style. It's super important for advertisement agencies. It's super important for brands. They want to make sure that you can uh, put it all together as a series, as a story. You need to be present on social media, right? The presence on social media uh, if you go through all these photographers that I was showing you, they have Instagram accounts, of course, and they post uh, way more frequent updates on Instagram or Facebook than on their portfolios. And basically, social media is like a funnel to bring people to watch your portfolio at some point. And the last advice of how to bring attention, how to make things happening faster if you have a good portfolio, if you believe that it's good, controversy is something that immediately brings tons of attention. For example, uh, Jill Greenberg. You know her, uh, sh now she's well-established photographer, uh, she's doing all kinds of work, but she started not just with animal portraits, I remember it was animal portraits at the beginning, great work, all is cool, but the real deal was start happening to her when she started posting this. And actually it was way more crying kids. I remember it was a series of crying children well done technically but they were crying and it was lots of discussions like what she's doing to those babies why they're crying in their studio maybe she's i don't know spanking them or whatever either case it worked be careful when you do it but this is something that works all the time controversy. I hope it was useful for you. There is a little bit more about this on the link on the description. Uh, we have a few interviews and uh, some ideas about building the portfolio posted on 40G School of Photography blog uh, before, so you can uh, check it. Maybe it will be useful for you as well. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check that uh, little bell. Uh, next time when we post some good video, you'll be notified and you won't miss it. Okay, any comments, anything that you have to share with me, please comment uh, below and I'll be happy to answer. See you next time. Bye. We really want, you know, the...